Okay, today we will be showing you how to install solenoids in a six-speed ASIN transmission. We're going to first start by removing the oil drain plug, which is a five millimeter hex head. Inside that drain plug, there's a riser, which is also a five millimeter hex head that will allow all of the fluid to drain out of the pan. If you don't take this out, the pan is still going to be full of fluid. This is what the riser looks like. Once that's finished draining, we're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolts that hold the pan on. Okay, now the next step we're going to do is remove the wire harness and we're going to unplug all of these solenoids. It's important to notice before you take this apart where the wires, how the wires are routed around the valve body. You can see this wire is coming out here on the front of it. You've got one coming out above the valve body here. You've got your two sensor wires in the back. Uh, it's very important to put it back together that the way it was. We're also going to take zip ties and zip tie the selector back to the bars that hold the solenoids in so it doesn't fall out during our removal of the valve body. We're removing this wire harness. It helps if you get a pick. Be careful not to pry the plastic too hard because it will break. There are small locks on these that you can use a pick to unlock. It's stuck on here, so we're going to use some pliers just to rock it back and forth to free it up. Okay, our zip tie came off, so we've resecured it here before we're going to pull this valve body. The next thing we're going to do is take the 12 10 millimeter bolts securing the valve body. I like to get them all loose first. Now we have the valve body ready to come out and it's going to make a mess because there's a lot of fluid behind it. Okay, now that we've got the valve body removed, we're going to remove these two bolts here and there's also these two bolts. These metal brackets hold pins in each solenoid to hold the solenoids in. We're going to install the solenoids in this order. They're color coded. You'll see that there's numbers on these solenoids. Those are just for manufacturing purposes. The two black solenoids are the same. They, each black solenoid can go in each other's spot. They're both the same solenoids. The same with the yellow. The gray is different. You've got the large solenoid that's got a different end on them than all the rest. The large solenoid is the only solenoid here with a different end as well that goes in this location here. This is an eight millimeter to remove these bolts. You're gonna wanna grab a magnet to get the pins that hold the solenoids in. You'll see these pins. Each one of those pins hold the solenoids in. You'll also notice that the diameter of these solenoids is different. The small can solenoid is an upgrade to the large can solenoid. It's going to sit 
with the small gap here, which is going to be different from the large can solenoids. And we've got the pins here once again. Sometimes they can be stubborn to come out. You just got to twist the solenoids. Okay, the gray solenoid is going to go here. And then you'll notice the ends of these solenoids are different than all the other solenoids. You want to make sure that you line up the pins properly with the grooves in the solenoid. Okay, and that's it. We've just replaced all the linear solenoids in this valve body. You'll notice there's two solenoids at the bottom of this valve body that we're not going to replace. These solenoids are on-off solenoids, and they are not prone to failure like the rest of the linear solenoids. We do stock these, but they are very rare to have trouble. Okay, now we've trouble. got the valve body back in place. We've got all the screws in, just started. You want to go around and make sure you've got all the wires in the right spot. If the wires aren't in the same spot they were, the harnesses will be too short to get to all the plugs. We're just going to make these hand tight and then we're going to go back and torque them to the proper spec. Okay, now we're going to tighten these valve body bolts. The torque spec on these is 8 newton meters plus 90 degrees. We're just going back over them to make sure that we got all of them. Now we've got the valve body all torqued, we're going to reinstall the wire harnesses. We've got to put the bolt back on this sensor here. Okay, we're okay. Bolting, putting the bolt in the sensor here. Okay, that's how our harness should look. Everything's connected. You're going to want to double check all your plugs to make sure they're tight. You don't want to have to come back in here. Then we're going to tuck them in the clips that hold the wires. There's one here and there's one around the back. That'll hold them away from the pan. Okay, everything looks good. We're going to install the shift selector. And then we're going to install the filter. Okay, you're going to want to make sure when you put this in that this pin falls into that groove. If you don't, you're not going to be able to shift your transmission. You're going to have to come back in here.
Okay, we've got the filter on, all the solenoids are plugged in, so we're ready to install our transmission pan. First, we're going to clean all the fluid off using brake clean. Okay, our transmission's clean. We've installed our new gasket on our new transmission pan. We've got the riser in the transmission pan, don't forget that part. Okay, we're just going to get all these snug, and then we're going to go back and torque them. Okay, the torque spec on these is going to be 7 newton meters. Okay, now we're ready to put our fluid in. This is a 2005 model. It's got a fill port here to add the fluid. Today, I'm going to show you how to add the fluid on the newer models, and we're going to add the fluid here through the drain plug. I believe 07 and newer does not have the fill port. It has to be added through the drain plug. So we're going to install our adapter here in the drain plug, and this is going to allow us to pump the fluid up into the transmission pan. Now we're going to pump five quarts of fluid Okay, now that we've pan. added five quarts of transmission fluid to the vehicle, we're inside with our VAGCOM. We're going to go into the transmission control module and check the, the transmission fluid temperature. Once in the auto trans computer, go to measuring blocks, and you're going to go to group six. It's going to give us the temperature. So we're at 29 degrees Celsius. We're going to start the car. Hold your foot on the brake, place the car in drive, let it sit and drive about a minute, place it in neutral, and then place it in reverse for about a minute. Make sure you keep your foot on the brake while doing this. Okay, now we're going to keep an eye on the ATF temperature. We're at 30 degrees Celsius. Once it gets to 35 degrees Celsius, we're going to check the fluid level. Now our transmission fluid temperature is 36 degrees Celsius. We'll check okay, the level. Okay, to check the level, we're going to make sure that we've got fluid coming out of here, and we don't, so we're going to have to add more fluid. You have to do this before the transmission gets over 40 degrees. Okay, now you see that the transmission fluid's draining back out, which means we have more than enough fluid. Once this uh, stream begins to slow down, we'll put the cap on. Now you see this, our stream is slowing down. We've got the proper amount of fluid. We're going to reinstall the drain plug. Okay, now the torque on this drain plug is 27 newton meters. And that's it. Now we're going to follow the reset procedure on the solenoids. And the problem solved.